Welcome back, William Wing, Fly Corvair. Come on in and let's get a good look at a three liter Corvair. This one's just been rebuilt and it's running on the test stand. The first step is we're going to remove the uh, air shroud off the top that provides the cooling air so you can get a better look. Then we'll take a look at the simplicity of the motor. Here's your layout of the Corvair. It's a horizontally opposed six-cylinder air-cooled engine built by General Motors. In this particular configuration of being used for an aircraft power plant, the engine has been modified and is now three liters displacement instead of 2,700 cc's. Let's come on in and get a closer look at some of the components to it. The Corvair motor was manufactured by General Motors between 1960 and 1969. They actually made two million motors domestically. Today, a tiny fraction of that is left, but there's plenty to go around in experimental aviation. I've been working with Corvair motors as flight engines since 1989, and we have never had a shortage of core motors. The Corvair motors has a long history of flying an aircraft going all the way back to 1960. Bernard Petenpole was the first experimental aviator to fly a Corvair motor and they've been continuously used since. And the fleet is about 500 flying aircraft with Corvair power. Not giant, but enough to be well proven over the long run. Let's take a look at some of the details of the engine. Come on in close. Let's start at the business end. Here we have a test propeller. Most of the things that you see on the stand today do not represent flight condition, but this is a test stand. The test stand uh, is many years old and has run over 400 Corvair motors, mostly at Corvair colleges, but a lot of our production engines and all sorts of testing has been done on it. So some of the things you see here will be in test stand configuration rather than aircraft configuration. We'll have other videos to take a look at what aircraft installations look like. Starting with the propeller, this is a test club that allows us to run upwards of 3,500 RPM for high RPM testing. It doesn't actually represent, it is manufactured out of a warp drive propeller, but it doesn't represent a flight propeller, just a test club. This is a gold propeller hub. The engine installation is direct drive. The gold propeller hub is bolted directly onto the end of the crankshaft. This engine has no reduction and is a simplistic installation like Lycoming's and Continental's are. Behind the gold propeller hub is an SPA fifth bearing. That is an additional bearing bolted on the engine. It takes up all the propeller loads and has been well proven in flight. There have been over 400 of these delivered to customers and they've been the standard for over a decade. At the front we have a modified starter this is our 2400L starter. It comes as a complete assembly and a system. The starter is a stunningly light three and a half pounds, yet it has a permanent magnet and a very, very strong gear reduction in it that allows it to crank the Corvair with very little amperage out of a battery. Moving backwards, we have the uh, two bank six cylinder configuration. The intake manifold is on the top and the exhaust system is on the bottom. This is referred to as a cross-flow cylinder head. Corvair motors have one spark plug per cylinder. If you have a four-cylinder engine or less, you should have two spark plugs per cylinder. On a six-cylinder engine, one spark plug per cylinder is acceptable. Moving to the ignition system, although it is single spark plug, the ignition system contains both points and electronic ignition are housed inside the housing. Again, this is a test stand configuration here with uh, fasteners and wiring that is not uh, flight quality, but is for test purposes only. As we move back here, the engine, which originally had a blower fan on top for cooling in a car, now has a propeller on the front. Anytime the flight engine is running, the propeller is pumping the air through the cowling to cool the motor. 
This particular motor has a gold top cover that is part of the starter package. And as we move aft on the engine, this is a gold oil filter housing. The gold oil filter housing, part number 2601, is configured so that it picks up the oil temperature at the highest temperature point in the motor and the oil pressure at the lowest pressure point in the motor. Again, some of the hosing is for test stand configuration. We do not run oil coolers on breaking in motors. We want the oil to be warm quickly. The k and filter seen here is actually, uh, quite often people remark that it's small, but it is a modern automotive filter with a very efficient element. We've been using it for many years and it bridges the gap between lightweight and very efficient uh, filtration. As we move to the back, all Corvair motors left the factory in the horsepower ranges that we use with a harmonic balancer. This is a torsional vibration dampener. We install these in all flight engines, on, and this is the stock location that would have been at the rear bumper of the car. This uh, torsional vibration dampener protects the crankshaft. Crankshafts are available both in the original forge configuration, which all Corvairs had forge crankshafts, but today we also have billet cranks available from SPA. Moving back here, we also have high volume oil pumps right there. This is part of our HV2000 engine installation package in the back with all the oil system components. This long tube right here is actually the intake manifold. Although it looks long, the engine does have instantaneous throttle response. So it's one of those uh, things where people ask about, but when you see it in operation, you understand how well it works. Again, some of the things are in test stand configuration. A uh, good example right down here on the exhaust system. The exhaust system as you see it here is cast iron exhaust logs from the car. We don't use those in flight configuration, but in a test stand configuration where we're interested in hearing a new motor running perfectly on the stand, the cast iron exhaust system suppresses exhaust noise so that we can hear valve train operation audibly. Moving backwards, the test stand, although it's simple in configuration, uh, includes things like digital five-wire uh, five O2 sensors so we can very, very accurately measure the air-fuel mixture under all circumstances. We have a fair degree of instrumentation on the stand that gives us a whole picture of what's going on. Again, over 400 engines have been run on this particular stand at various locations around the country. It's a well-demonstrated engine, both in, in the air and on the ground. Corvair motors are accessible to many different home builders. We offer support for traditional builders who are building it just using parts from us, which is the majority of our builders. We also offer engines as kits with in-person direct assistance. We offer Corvair Colleges, where everybody is welcome to come and learn and build their own engine on the spot. We also have a line of complete engines that are test run, where the builder can either come down and see it run in person and learn about it hands-on, or we can ship it to them with a complete set of manuals. Uh, the engine comes in a number of configurations from 2,700 cc's through 3.3 liters. It runs from 100 horsepower to over 125 horsepower as installed in the aircraft. These are continuous power ratings. Let's take a look down below the engine. Today's particular test is a Rotec TBI fuel system. This is being tested right now. Please stay tuned for more information on this. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.